And I would like to welcome on the stage uh, Nino Pojar, data scientist at B Tema. Please. <laughs> Apologies, B Terna. B Terna. B Terna in English, B Terna when we say it locally. <laughs> okay. Uh, so thank you very much for for actually being here so late. Uh, so good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Nino Pojar. I work in Biterna. We are a company, actually now we cover everything, Nordics, DA, Adriatics, UK, and so on. And we develop business solutions. Uh, so ERP solutions, TRM solutions, BI solutions, and now also AI solutions. Uh, so today we'll talk about our AI solutions, so the product we have. So I said the riddles in supply chain, but more is solving uh, the modern supply chain challenges and how we see it from our customers. So from setting up purchase orders, uh, then forecasting demand or sales, uh, setting up schedules of production orders, transfer between stores and so on. But we'll go into details and see what it's, what it's all about. So the agenda for today is uh, first to see those challenges in supply chain we see and how we see them working with customers for now three, four years in supply chain uh, AI solutions. Uh, then we'll see uh, why demand forecasting uh, using regression is such an important piece of uh, supply chain optimization. What are the challenges in forecasting? Uh, then solving those challenges and how solving those challenges can actually using forecasting solve all other supply chain challenges and see in the end some financial and uh, business impacts. So first, what is the potential of data and AI in supply chain? So McKinsey and Company has this really cool web, web page where you can see the potential of different uh, aspects of, uh, of one company's operation. And, it's, and you can see here that supply chain has really huge potential of application of AI and huge amount of data is generated there. So on top of that, also McKinsey and Company says that uh, companies early enables of AI uh, will improve their logistics by 15%, uh, inventory levels by 35%, and service levels by 65%. And on top of that, Gartner says that by 2024, so that's about a year in the future, 50% uh, of the supply chain organizations will uh, use AI solutions. So what are the challenges in supply chain? So we'll talk from the perspective of of, let's say, fictive customer. A customer that uh, has a company, company that works in distribution, so distributing items to retail stores, to wholesale, and also has some internal production of items, so manufacturing part. So how does it work? What are those challenges? So let's say we have a company in the beginning. The company needs to know the demand uh, it has from the supplier. So, so there is a supplier and demand has to equal the supply. And then when it knows the demand, schedules a purchase order from the supplier, the items come to the warehouse. And then they also have some raw ingredients, raw materials that they use to develop their products, final products. And with that, they have a full of stock at their warehouse. And then it comes to distributing. Distributing to retail stores, so you have to know the demand in stores, and you transfer them, those items, to stores and lower the stock and the central warehouse. And the second part is also the wholesale, so you also have to account on the wholesale. And in the end, you always need to be aware that you have some safety stock, so in the end you have to have stock on central warehouse. That is enough to cover everything. And there is another point in this solution that if you have your own stores, then each store has a different sales dynamics and they get stock lowered a bit in different, different dynamics. So you also have transfers between stores to send the item to a store which has a higher potential of actually selling this item. And what are the points where AI can help here? So the first point I think is demand forecasting. Everything evolves around demand forecasting. The second point is automation and optimization of those purchase orders from the suppliers, from the vendors. 
The third point is the optimization of production planning. So how to optimally schedule the sequence of our uh, pro production orders, work orders. And the fourth point is to find where, where to put the item within the tr store transfers where the potentials for sales are the highest. And everything I said kind of involves around demand forecasting. So you know, have to know the demand to set up purchase order from the supplier, to set up production orders, and to set up transfers. So we are kind of focus here on demand forecasting for starters. So we use the ML approach, but let's first start with some more traditional approach that our customers used before they implemented our cool solutions. So it usually starts with statistical approaches. So you have some uh, historical sales or historical, his historical sales to say, uh, through some time frame, and you can use some averages, and you find average as your forecast for the future. The other possibility is to use some statistical methods such as ARIMA, SARIMA, and use those to forecast future. And one nifty thing that our <laughs> clients in supply chain do is they usually take sales in the last period as a simple solution to estimate the future sales, the future demand. And all that is nice, but what if the true value is completely off? And you cannot forecast correctly. So what we do, we use EML approach when we develop features. So we have some set of sales features. We have a set of holiday features, for example, a set of, uh, let's say, weather features, a set of some also external features. And also we have same values, same features for the future, and we estimate the demand using machine learning, which is far more correct, uh, more accurate than to true value than any of those previous traditional approaches. And how does it work? So uh, it starts with data sources. So we usually connect to different data sources. We can connect to ERP systems, TRM systems, BI systems. And we always need to know that the data is true and relevant. It's really important to have true data. Garbage in, garbage out. Have true data. Then we have to have clean data, or maybe it's best to say we enrich this data. Data about outliers. If there are outliers in sales, we have to deal with them. Stock out periods, deal with them. Promotional periods, deal with them. Uh, substitute data, deal with them. And then next pile, next building block is the building features. Build features about date features, building features about sales, features some contextual data about outliers, as I said, the out of stock periods, promotional periods, and some external features, maybe weather features and so on, economical features. Those all can help our forecast. And the third pile is also, of course, <laughs> building a machine learning model. So we use different algorithms for that. Uh, then we use different granularity. We can, we can forecast daily. We can forecast on month. We can forecast on weeks. And we, can forecast, we do forecasting for each item or SKU and for each location, so retail store, as we say it, or production location. And everything that comes together. And from that, we build our forecast, which come up presented as forecast in this chart. So in this chart, you see the forecast that gets an output from our algorithm. So the pinky ones, the pink ones, are the historical sales, and the blue ones are the forecast, forecast the demand or sales in the future. And this looks really nice if it's everything constant and everything is a stable historical sales. But on top of that, we always have some challenges. So what are those riddles? I promised riddles. So what are the riddles we have in supply chain forecasting? The first thing is seasonality. Sales are never constant. They happen really seasonal. Maybe some, we have examples in uh, big pharma industry where allergies affect very much seasonality of the sales and so on. The next riddle would be how to handle stockout periods, because the periods where the stockouts were, those sales are not relevant. They are not true sales. Because if you don't have item on the stock, you can sell it. There's no real sale. Uh, then promotional period. So when there's promotional period, where is markdown period, you higher sales. Always our sales are higher. Always the sales are higher. Maybe the promotional periods all happen in the future, so we can expect higher sales in those periods. And then the third point are outliers. Outliers can hugely affect 
the, the forecast. So we need to have to, we need to deal with them also. And then the price elasticity. So when I said in the beginning uh, the, the demand meets the supply, but it has to meet it at the right price. So if the price is higher, the sales are lower. If the price is lower, the sales are higher, right? And also we need to find the right price. The right price to set up each item. And then external impact. So <laughs> we have really now nice examples right now ex about external impact. We have COVID, we have the Russia-Ukrainian war, we have uh, inflation, economical impacts, and so on. And finally, what with new items? What with items is new? We've never seen it. We don't have any historical sales. So we also have to deal with this. So now I'll repeat just once more. Seasonality is the problem, stockout periods, promotional periods, outliers in data, price elasticity, external impact, and new items. And now let's see how we deal with them. First, the seasonality. Our forecast works extremely well with seasonality. Just see this example. Really seasonal item, the sales are much higher in the summer period. You see the July, July periods are much higher. And then our forecast, deal, our forecast correctly anticipates these things in the future. So we are, sol we are solving the first riddle. And now go on to the next riddle, the stockout periods. We find the stockout periods in the historical sales. And you can see that the sales, the forecast for this item are pretty similar. Uh, it's not similar. They're pretty correct from the visual standpoint to what we would expect for this item. And you can see that actually lower on the other chart, the stock. And the stock levels in these periods were stock out periods. So they didn't impact our forecast because we dealt with them. We have, we ha we have modules that deal with stock out periods, develop features and so on to deal with stock outs. Then what with promotional periods? This is one item which has a promotional period in history. This was promotion in historical period. And this was the promotion that is expected to happen in the future period. And you can see that our forecast recognized that. It recognized that and it, it forecasted a higher sales just because it's a promotional period. Then outliers in data. We have a module that directly detects outliers in historical sales, so they never impact the future sales. So this was just some one-off sales, something irregular happened in the future. And that's why the, the, that, that, that's something that shouldn't, that shouldn't happen in the future and shouldn't impact our forecast. And then a really, really interesting thing is price elasticity. So as I said, price elasticity means the higher the price, the lower the sales. The lower the price, the higher the sales. So you can see here that if the price is the lower, 20, 0.25 euros, the sales are higher. So this one would create the higher sales. And you can see on the, on the other chart that this price actually, it, develop, it, it creates a higher sales, but the margin, because you also have to account the cost of goods sold, the COGS, it creates that margin is negative, so it's not the optimal price. And the second one, 0.25 euros, it has a lower sales, but it creates the highest margin. So this is the optimal price. This is what we also offer. We offer to find the optimal price for our item and also this, the forecast for this item. And the third example is where we have a really huge price, 0 0.57. And 0 0.57 would create uh, lowest low sales, but also it didn't create more from the perspective of margin. So this is how we dealt with price elasticity. And now external impact. And this is the example of the external impact where the COVID period happened, those, those lockdown period of COVID. You can see this is the uh, March, early uh, April of 2020. You can see how <laughs> the sales went really, really, really low. And uh, our algorithms deal well with that. It, the funny thing is that in the beginning, when the lockout happened, it didn't deal, deal very well. It was completely off for the, like two or three weeks. And then they started learning from the COVID periods and they kind of adapted to that. And what was really good is that when the second wave came, the third wave came, one of our clients really had the luck. They really helped them so much knowing, uh, anticipating and forecasting sales correctly with COVID periods. And the next thing is uh, for new, what do we do with new items? So what we do, we do this funny thing when we, uh, this happens actually mostly in the fashion industry. 
This is the huge example in the fashion industry because in fashion you have new seasons, new items each season, each year, and you don't have much historical sales. And what we do, we find the similar items in the his history. So we do it directly from the picture. So we develop a computer vision model that finds uh, similar uh, items. So this is bo some boots, and you can see the similar boots that were sold in the history. Another example are heels, and our system finds directly from the picture uh, similar items, or some other shoes, and we find similar items in the historical data. Other, some, and again, some shoes, and we find the historical. And also, we can do it from the picture that is likely taken from, from a phone. Not, it doesn't have to be cleaned. It can, be, can, it can be taken like this from the phone, and we find the similar ones. And using those uh, historical items, then we make forecast for the future. So we kind of dealt now with all those problems in forecasting. And now when we have a good forecasting, we need to apply it somewhere. As I said in the beginning, we have those four points. OK, demand forecasting. And other points are scheduling purchase orders, right? optimization of production planning, and the third point was uh, store transfers. We can have more, but these are the ones for this presentation. So we're putting it all together. But before we do that, one thing I really want to, uh, I really want to say uh, from, our, from our use cases with clients, really important thing is to visualize everything. So to build trust between the user, which is usually some buyer, purchaser, or category manager and our system because they are they don't they don't know much about AI and they say so this system is giving me something here I I don't know what that is it wrong is it is it not they don't they don't believe the system before so this is why we visualize really everything in BI tools so I'm click or Power BI or any BI tool just to visualize all the forecast and recommendations and now let's go into that pile one recommended purchase orders so. In this kind of BI application, you can see the table here. And this table also includes in the last row the recommendations of optimal purchase orders based on forecast and constraints that each customer has, some safety stocks, uh, lead times, frequencies, and so on. And how it that does, so you can see here on the upper chart, is the stock levels. Again, pink is historical and blue is future. And on the lower chart, as I said before, the sales in the historical period and sales in the future, uh, forecasted sales. So based on that, on based on those forecasted sales, we create a purchase orders to never go below some safety stock. So don't ever go in the stock out and also lower the stock to never go over stock and create that stock, which cannot be sold afterwards. Then the point two, when we are done with purchase orders, is creating optimal production plan. So we also provide visually information in a Gantt chart like this. We actually developed this for one of clients in, in Tiscarna Novo Mesto, so that's the industry, uh, where in Gantt chart they can see all the production orders which are optimized using, again, forecast to know how much to produce, and we optimize them using uh, evolutionary or genetic algorithms. And then store transfers. This is something that we did this project right here, picture this, or we did recently for a uh, shoe store company. So they can actually see for each store where to transfer each item. And they can edit it directly via application. So you can see these ones, twos, where to transfer each item from each store to which store, which has higher potential of sales. And finally, we like to say that our system is not another system to maintain. So you don't have to create a whole new system. You connect to data sources, ERP system, BI system, e CRM system, and then you integrate everything back, back to the ERP and see those recommendations, the purchase orders, the production orders, transfer recommendations back to the ERP system. And now we're, we are done what we do with our system. Let's see some financial impact and business benefits that our system can create. So for the beginning, automation. Manual work is reduced by 50%. One of our clients, uh, maybe somebody from Slovenia, so knows uh, Salus Group, uh, big pharma industry, they said directly to us that we lower them uh, manual work by 50%. And now, 
with the work lowered by 50% manual work, they can focus on those, those niche items, those uh, slow movers that we uh, kind of, in some cases, cannot forecast well, and they can just focus on those more complex items and leave the automation to those simple and more uh, items with more constant sales. The next thing is cash flow, because uh, our recommendations usually lower the stock levels by 25 to 65% from our client's response, and lowering the stock level creates the lower possibility of overstock and creates a higher uh, cash flow. So the cash flow does increase. It does increase. Uh, the next thing is using optimization of planning sequence, so those genetic algorithms that optimize the sequence of the work orders, the production orders, can utilize the machines, so the resources such as machines, and workforce much higher rate. And with this, we can increase also the service level and create much less delays in production and improve the efficiency of the production planning. And also, uh, the benefit is the increased profit because not just lowering the stock, we are also uh, avoiding the stockouts. If you avoid the stockouts, it means that you don't lose potential sales. Because if you are out of stock, you're losing potential sales. If you don't lose potential sales, you're creating a higher profit, right? And also, if you're transferring the item to the place when the potential of sale is higher, you're again creating a higher profit. So our system can also, it's a funny thing to say that we lower the stock, and we also lower the stockout period. So we create higher profit and a higher cash flow. Then verification through dashboard, and this is something I really said, it's really, really important for our cost clients, for our end users, the purchasers, the buyers, uh, the uh, category managers, to understand why we are forecasting something, to be able to edit those data, and to understand what is really going on and why our system is recommending what it's recommending. And in the end, it's control. You know when is something is coming to a warehouse, uh, you can set up lit uh, you can set up frequencies much better and understand what's going on and you have much better control over the whole uh, your supply chain operations and to conclude with this as i said what are the benefits automation of uh, orders and planning controlled and optimized stock increased cash cash flow and profit increased service level controlled movement of the warehouse to really have the right product at the right place, at the right time, across different industries. So we have worked with many industries so far, let it be big pharma, let it be uh, food production, uh, automotive parts, uh, fashion industry, many clients in fashion industry, and so on, and so for chemical industry, I can't remember everything. So actually, through uh, really many industries, especially in retail. And uh, this is actually it for me. Uh, so our product, you can just scan QR uh, code. This is a supply chain product from us. It works in cloud in Azure or set up uh, on-prem. And uh, this is pretty much it. These are the picture of our team. Most pictures are from our team because I really think that the team is behind everything. And they are right here, the three members of our team. Radko Nikolic, Luka Premosha, and our team lead, Božidara Cvetković. So really, really to uh, give them a little fame for everything we do so well over the years. So thank you very much for listening to me. Ask any questions right now. Afterwards, we are also here tomorrow. And that's it for me for now. Thank you very much, Ninu and the team. Do we have uh, any questions for Nino? Yes, please. Thank you. Uh, if it's not a secret, uh, what have you used for outlier detection? Or it depends uh, from the case it, it to the case? It depends. It's not, it's not one model. It depends on the sales dynamics. So it depends on sales dynamics. Some are through statistical things, uh, statistical you know, statistical yeah, like set score or something. Yes, uh, but also sometimes we look how the how the one sale impacts the whole group, and so on. We really have like four or five different types 
it really depends on cell dynamics, and we have really different, different, mo different model for each uh, item for that to detect uh, outliers. Thank you. Thank you for the question. Oh. Um, so is the uh, safety stock um, determined dynamically with dynamically. time, or dynamically. is it fixed? Dynamically by uh, the system. The system, the, the, the text uh, calculates the safety stock dynamically from the error it's making in the forecast. Huh. Okay, cool. Do we have any more questions? All right, once more, thank you very much, Nino. And uh, 